Hi, this is Dr. Pan recording from Tucson, Arizona. I hope life is treating you well and thank you for watching this clip on finding axis of symmetry. Here we have a quadratic formula, a formula, quadratic equation here. Basically because this one is a positive number or bigger than zero, so we have a facing up. So parabola is going to look like that. Right, that's the first thing. And when we're dealing with the problem, the really the important things are just the three points. We have the what we call the zeros or the roots, where it curve cross x x x axis, and the important part here, the vertex. The vertex is important because it gives you the maximum or minimum value for the function and gives us what we're looking for, axis of symmetry. Because symmetry is where you fold this curve. If you were to fold along this line, dotted line here, the curve would be right on top of each other. The way we find axis of symmetry, you can try to memorize by substituting uh, x equal to minus b over 2a and taking the coefficient from the uh, second order formula, second order function here, my, but my experience has been on the test, on the pressure, chances of you remembering this, it's not good. Even if you do remember it and then on the final you might forget it, it's just a messy way. Okay. Over the years what I've been teaching my students is forget about memorizing formula, let's figure it out. Okay. If we can use this one, put it into the complete square, I know a lot of students don't like this term complete square and they raise the hair on you on your head. But that's okay. If if you can stick with this one and this is as messy as it comes when it com comes to complete square. But in this uh, short clip maybe we can uh, remove that fear. Well all we have to do really is group the square term and its uh, cousin, its linear term. Okay. And leave the constant outside. A complete square is just a fancy way to say, look, the two terms I have in there, I want to add a magic number, subtract it right away. Well, of course, I want to subtract it because I don't want to change what I started with and so I can keep my equal sign. And this magic number I want to keep in there is half of this number in front of the linear term. That's the linear term, x to the 1 power. Take it a half and it's squared. And you put a 4 in here, basically. 4 divided by 2 is 2, 2 squared is 4. Okay, so I minus this number out right away. Now, here's the completing square part, the magic part. I have 1, 2, 3. I'm going to regroup the first three together, form a new family, sort of speaking. Okay, leave the minus 4 alone, and then you're done. That's all the step you need. This is the completed square term. Once we get this step, all we have to do is x plus 2 squared. We're going to leave it here. I'm just distributing 2 inside. So I have a minus 8. Okay, I multiply the first time, and now I'm multiplying the second term, minus 3. So my rewriting form is this. So basically, what I started was fx, which is 2x squared plus 8x plus 3. Okay. Through this so-called a process called a complete square, which is the of adding a magic number, subtracted it right away. That's it. Okay. And then this little factoring part, x squared plus 4x plus 4, I basically factored it. It turned out to be a perfect square in that that's where the name come from, complete square, literally. So I'm basically rewriting this one into a different form. And why do I want to do that? Because this little form gives me where the vertex is. Okay. The reason it gives me vertex is this. Now imagine if x is equal to minus 2. How I get that? I said x plus 2 equal to 0. Okay. If x equal to minus 2, then you can see this function here that we're working with, this is our original function, have two different forms. If x equal to minus 2, if you substitute it in there, something magic happens. This whole chunk becomes 0. Okay, This whole chunk here becomes 0. 
Now you can't see that in this form here because you don't know where to put x equal to what number would it get this minimum value here. Okay, so in our case, minimum value is minus 11. So what we're saying is because rewriting this 2x squared plus 8x plus 3 into a different form, all of a sudden we see something we couldn't see before in that x equal to minus 2 get this whole chunk equal to 0. And because this used to be a square term, the smallest of this chunk could ever get is 0. Anything else you put x in there is going to be bigger than 0 because it's a square term. So because when x equal to minus 2, this whole chunk becomes 0, the lowest value I could ever hope to get out of this function is minus 11. Thus, we have the vertex. Vertex is at when x equal to minus 2, y, the function y, is equal to minus 11. Okay, so hopefully I convinced you that by f transforming this function I gave you into the vertex form, you can find x equal to minus 2, and that's setting the square part equal to 0. You can see where the minimum value or maximum value uh, is equal to a certain constant here. And why do we care? Well, vertex is where the symmetry is at. Minus 2, minus 11. So here's our curve. Okay, so symmetry is right, the curve going up a set, up and down, passing through the vertex of minus 2, minus 11. And how do we write the line for this one going up a set, up and down? Well, we write it x is equal to minus 2. And that's the x of symmetry here. All right, so a quick review, nothing to be feared when they're looking for x of symmetry, think complete square. Complete square, all it's saying is add a magic number, take it away, and that's all you have to do, really. Nothing really tedious about it, okay? So hopefully this one will review some of the um, fundamentals of the parabola or quadratics, all right? Once again, from Tucson, Arizona, this is Dr. Pam making learning math fun at least trying to. Please comment or thumb up if the video has been helpful. Until next time, have a confident day.